1 Corinthians 12, 1. Now concerning spiritual, remember we said this is things of the spirit. Gifts is italicized, it was added in. It's actually saying concerning the things of the spirit. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed, and no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. This is not my message, but last week I ignored it. I have to address it. A lot of people have taught that if a demoniac, someone demon-possessed, someone that's a heathen, someone that's a witch, they cannot say Jesus is Lord. But let me tell you, that's not what this is saying. I have experienced people saying, demoniacs saying Jesus is Lord. Matter of fact, I don't have time to tell the story tonight, but there was a, a, a young woman in Mongolia, about 14 years old. She would got started coming to the church, learning the Bible, and she would pass out in the service. And her eyes would roll back in her head, and they would turn all black. And this deep man's voice would come out of her mouth. And it would say, I am the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would, and this woman, would, little girl, who was very quiet and shy, would speak with this deep man's voice and would tell the details of the people who had sickness, who had cancer, who they were married to, who was being abused. And while she was passed on the floor and her eyes rolled back and their eyes were all black, she would tell all of the, everyone's personal things and she would say, I am God, the one true God, the Lord Jesus Christ, obey me. And people would weep and cry. And the pastor, he was, you know, he, he thought it was God. Playing for my What Ethan, what did you do? Okay. The, he thought it was God. So he brought in a, an African missionary that was in Mongolia preaching. So the African missionary came in. And he said, well, I know how to test it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. He said, I know how to test it. Let's make it say Jesus is Lord. So he goes to this young girl. She falls down, eyes roll back, eyes turn black. And he says, the African minister says, say Jesus is Lord. And the, the demon says, ha, 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 you're trying to trick me? I am the Lord God. I am the true God, Jehovah. And Jesus is Lord, my son. So the, and, then, and then the demon started prophesying to the African guy. And you, your wife, is pregnant with your third child in Zimbabwe. And da, da, da. And she started prophesying all this stuff. And he falls to his knees weeping and crying. And he's like so shook and touched by God or whatever, right? But actually the whole while it was a demon. So he had a couple other white missionaries come in and they said, well, I don't know. It, it, it's crazy. It's scary looking, but it must be God because she says Jesus is Lord. So now all these pastors, even missionaries, they were all deceived because this woman was saying Jesus is Lord. So what happened, long story short, my pastor friend, he leaves Ulaanbaatar and he goes to another city called Erdenet. And while he's in Erdenet, it's like he was under a spell, he said, the whole time. When he got to another city, he said it's like the spell broke off of him. And I ex explained to him why. I said the reason why is because, no, I think he told me why actually. He said the spell broke off him. And God showed him that that woman, that little girl, little quiet, little innocent girl, she was possessed with the principality of Ulaanbaatar, the demonic prince that ruled the city. And he said, God, why didn't you show me? 
And he, God said, he said, because while you're in the city, you are under the zeitgeist of that principality. You're under the, the umbrella of that principality, so you were blinded. I had to take you out of the city so you could see clearly. So he came back to the church, called the girl's mother, and told the, the mother and the girl to come to the office. And they came to the office, and he sat her down. And he began to, he said, I, he said, the Lord has shown me, you know, whatever, that the, you are the principality of Ulaanbaatar. And that she just began to curl, blood curdling, scream, and demons just began to manifest in that little girl. It was a demonic spirit. I don't want you to be ignorant. And I've seen so many Christians be taught that if they have a demon, they can't say Jesus is Lord. That's not what the scripture means. Okay. Not only that, I've one time in a, a, a Pentecostal church, there was a, a demoniac manifesting, and all the people were praying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And the demon began to mock them. And the demon began to say, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And the demon started mocking all the, all, the, all the Christians who were surrounding them trying to pray. Demons can say the name of Jesus. They can say Jesus is Lord if they're going to deceive you by it or weaken your faith by it. My personal opinion when you're doing deliverance is don't allow them to speak, period. Jesus would say, he rebuked them. He would say, shut up. And come out. Don't allow demons to talk. If you allow them to talk, they'll pick on you for being cross-eyed, fat, short, whatever. They'll lie. They'll, 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 they'll tell your sins. Young Cho one time was trying to cast out a demon. And the demon said the sin that he did the night before. And he was embarrassed in front of all these other pastors and turned red. And he ran out of the room. <laughs> The demon cast the pastor out because he was so embarrassed he ran into the other room. Shut up. No screaming, no yelling, no crying, no complaining. Just come out. That's how you deal with demons.